Thank you so much, Martina. Um, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, I like to talk about the, the 3D. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, it looks good. Awesome, good. Uh, I like to talk about the, the 3D scanning in, um, in the 3D uh, production or like in the 3D print. So um, all the time when I get in contact with people that they need a scan or need a 3D scan, um, especially conservators, um, I look at the, uh, a lot of problems uh, in, in that matter that the, the pieces are most of the time uh, broken. So in, in the normal way, um, you have like your art piece uh, here, this uh, SLA print, like a whole print, uh, an SLA print. Um, from there, uh, you have the data and with the data and the cheat code, you print. But what's happened when the, when the print has a, a damage. Uh, so what happens when uh, something gets broken or, or get missing um, and you don't have the file or the cheat code anymore, uh, you need to reproduce the data. So that's happening with a 3D scan. So you start scanning the, the broken part and you do like a reverse engineering and with this data, you're able to print again and uh, fix the sculpture or you do like the whole sculpture again. Um, in 3D scanning, there are different um, uh, methods. I go through them. We have like structure light scanning, photogrammetry and LIDAR scan. And then uh, there is like CT and Emery. I don't touch them because that's like a total other field. And uh, when I work with this kind of scans, it's uh, a lot like uh, the, the amount of work gets like tremendous. Um, so um, there are like so many scanners out there. Uh, probably uh, you all saw one of them. Um, and we try to sort them in different groups, like in the first group, we have the structural light scans. The structural light scans is like the, the biggest group. There's so many structural light scans out there um, from different companies and they change like the, the, the changing and the, the progress in, in their quality is like uh, really um, norm, like it, it goes really fast. Like the, the next one is the photogrammetry. The photogrammetry is all about like uh, cameras and uh, drones, of course. And the leader scan, it's also a big field. It comes like from, uh, um, from scanning like um, topology. And um, in, in these three um, groups, uh, I work the most, like we in the structural light scan, the photogrammetry and the leader scan, we have all the tools to scan uh, art pieces or um, parts of museums. And the first uh, group, the structural light scan, uh, works like this. We have like um, most of the time two cameras and the two cameras look at the object and a projector is sending out um, um, a structure or a stripe pattern on the object. So on the right side, we have like this um, loop and on the loop we produce with the scanner uh, the pattern that is got written by the scanner. Um, in photogrammetry, uh, in the next um, step, we make uh, a lot of pictures and these pictures uh, get uh, written by the software and the software is uh, checking for like identical points on the, on the pictures. And with that, the, the software can reproduce um, the whole 3D image and makes like point clouds of it. 
So we have like here on the right side, we have uh, the sculpture still in the, the box. And we took like uh, a lot of images. Um, I think it's about 100, 120 to get like the, the 3D um, model on the right side. So as more picture you take and as higher the resolution of the camera is, uh, as better it is. The last one is like the last group is the, the leader scan. The leader scan group uh, is quite um, a special group because first like the scanners are crazy expensive and they're uh, used more for like um, scanning bigger objects like houses or uh, streets or something. But we use them also um, in museums uh, for, for bigger sculptures, for whole installations um, to get like a 3D um, scan of them. How it works like a laser is shooting out of the scanner and gets back to the scanner and then the distance or the time between this uh, shooting out and the coming back gets uh, an information for the scanner and like this the scanner can um, make also like a point cloud for, um, for the program. Uh, as you can see here on the right side, uh, LIDAR got used also to do art. Um, on the top, we have like a picture of a whole valley. Uh, it was made by a LIDAR scan. So all these points that the scanner was taking from the landscape uh, got into a file and the file was displayed as an art piece. And on the right side, uh, on the bottom, we have a whole museum scanned. Um, it was also uh, an installation uh, through the whole museum. And as a conservative aspect, uh, they decide to scan like the whole uh, museum with the sculpture in it. So that may a lot of sense if you uh, bring it back to the museum or um, if uh, if you want to have like uh, a data set um, just to um, save the, the art piece. So we have the, the three common uh, versions of 3D scanning. On the top we see the, the three um, technical um, drawings. And on the bottom, we have like the outcome of this three um, technical um, specs. So on the end, the software is all the time doing like a point cloud. These are like uh, 3D points in the three dimensional room. And out of that, the program is doing a poly mesh. So you actually have like a surface uh, or like an object as a 3D object. Um, all scans normally work like this. We have like the object, we scan, and then we go to the computer and process the, um, the scan. And after that, we bring it uh, through a slicer software uh, to the printer. Um, especially here, like the one scanner that you see here um, has like actually everything in it. So the, the scanner, already processes data and you can go directly to the slicer um, uh, and to the printer. Um, in my experience, I work a lot like daily with uh, scans and the, the biggest workload is like uh, working with the, the scans after they got scanned. So for like work, uh, make like the workload in different parts, I would think, uh, one fourth of uh, the workload is like the scanning and then three fourths uh, are like uh, data correction, uh, also modeling and then uh, making the file ready for print. Um, here you can see like the, the three uh, steps on the computers. It's like the, the 3D scan software, the modeling software and then also like the uh, 3D slicer software. Um, for scanning, uh, the big issue with uh, scanners uh, is that you can't scan 
everything. Um, I got a lot in contact with, with uh, museums and also with artists. They bring uh, object to me or they, they show me objects. They're really hard to scan. And um, this little uh, um, uh, paper here uh, shows what works and what doesn't work or on the left side, what works with a lot of effort. So like a really dark um, surfaces, reflective, uh, surfaces, shiny, clear, hairy, uh, closed geometries and undercuts. Um, what I mean with like closed geometries are like um, a ball with holes in it. Um, it's really hard because you can only scan what, what you can see by your eye. So because they're all um, like optical systems, um, they only work uh, what they can actually see. So if you um, have like a too deep hole in an object, the scanner is not able to reproduce uh, this hole or like on the pineapple, especially on the leaf part. And there are so many undercuts and really deep um, uh, holes uh, between the leaves. Uh, they are really hard to, to scan. Also, uh, fur like the fox here, uh, the light or the, the optical uh, input that could, uh, shoot at the, the object just disappears. Uh, so the scanner gets no information back. And also with glass and mirrors, uh, there is like so much um, uh, distortion that the, the scanner doesn't work. Um, and then on the other side, on the, the positive side, everything else works quite well. So um, most of the time in, in museum, um, when a, a museum calls me, uh, the most of the time there is gold involved or glass involved or um, a fabric involved that is hard to scan. So it's uh, a lot that we have to find a solution to, to scan the part. If it doesn't work, we have to go uh, and take a CT scan or an MRE um, to um, actually get the parts they can't be scanned by the optical systems. And uh, that's also like a, a picture that I, I showed a lot to my, my students. Um, what I want to say with this picture is like you really have to decide which kind of you, you use for which kind of object like uh, size wise. Uh, it doesn't make sense that you uh, take, uh, take a, a scanner that's like um, a, a big resolution, or like a, a too big resolution, but it's not able to, to scan like huge objects. It's all the time a question between resolution and uh, scan like um, the, the field of, of view of the scanner. So if you have like small parts, of course, you can go with the much higher resolution. Like if you have a coin, you go with the little brush on the left side, um, you catch all details. Uh, but if you have like a huge sculpture um, you go more like with the the big truck on the right side because most of the time you want to catch on the coin you want to catch every detail and on the huge sculpture normally you want to only capture like the the overall um, uh, geometry of course there are some expect, uh, exceptions uh, where you go with the little brush to the huge sculpture but then you have like a, a crazy uh, workload and also like data that's, uh, that goes like into like terabytes of, of data. And uh, in my daily um, work, uh, normally my files are around three to eight gigs um, in one file and you use uh, a, a strong computers only to handle them. Of course, on the end, the output is much smaller, but uh, because the scanner, the, they don't scan just the surface one time. During scanning, you scan uh, the surface like many times. And so you, the data gets really huge. 
Um, now we uh, I show you uh, some uh, examples from my work. Um, here we have a little swan. Um, the city of Zurich was afraid that because of the bronze and the value of the bronze, uh, people would steal the, the swan. And uh, so uh, they decide to scan it just as a backup. So we took the swan and uh, scanned the whole sculpture. And uh, uh, on the end, in, it went back and the backup uh, stays now at the city. And they were able to reproduce uh, the swan if it gets like stolen because of its value, like metal value. That's like the, the final scan. Um, another uh, field that I work with, it's like with the uh, violin conservator. Um, here they, we do some, some patches. So we first scan the, the bottom of the violin. On the right, you can see uh, the, the pattern that is thrown from the scanner uh, to the surface. And then uh, the two cameras picking up the, the information. Um, we can then uh, the, the 3D scan, we do a, a, a cheat code and with the cheat code, we mill a piece that gets into the bottom of the, the violin and on the end, uh, everything fits really well. So um, one of, of my work is to help conservators also, when, when there is like a defection or like a broken pieces on art works, uh, we scan the, the works and we reproduce the, the surface on the art piece. So the conservator can work uh, on the copy actually. And on the end, uh, the, the new piece fits uh, exactly to the original uh, broken piece. I hope that's uh, understandable. Um, here, uh, it's a foot of a, a Giacometti sculpture. And uh, on the left side, we have the clay, like the original clay uh, scanned. And on the right side, we have the bronze with the signing of Giacometti. And what we uh, figure out here or, or try to show is like if is the, the uh, bronze sculpture really from the or original um, plaster. And uh, as you can see, we, we did um, some uh, calculations and uh, there are really, uh, as it shows the lot is green, like a lot of the, the surface is green. That means like it fits really well. So we have like a 0 0.1 millimeter um, uh, that comes from the shrinking during the casting process. So actually like the, the clay, like the original clay, uh, sorry, plaster sculpture and the bronze uh, sculpture uh, are um, both originals. And the last work, uh, just want to show because it's a, a really nice work um, from uh, the artist Maya Franz in Zurich. It's a part of the Trevi Fountain in um, Rome, um, cast with uh, coins, Euro coins. Uh, the sculpture stands in the, the backyard of the final institute of the University of Zurich. So uh, what we did, we went to uh, Rome and took a lot of photographs from the Trevi Fountain and after that, we did the, a photogrammetry, all legal. And um, uh, because there was a, a big distance between the, the fountain uh, border and, and the actual sculpture, we had to do a, a lot of uh, sculpting. And the, the data was like milled in styrofoam and afterwards got casted and ended up uh, as a fountain 
uh, made out of euro coins. They're uh, the one that are thrown into the fountain um, and they stay now in the, the backyard of the final institute of the University of Zurich. Uh, in that way, I say thank you. I hope uh, I was able to show you an overview about the different um, techniques for 3D scanning. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. And uh, in this way, thank you.